put your hand together, church. For our King, be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. He is worthy to be praised this morning. King Jesus. Just hold the hand of your neighbor at this moment. you hold hands in the ah, ah. Hallelujah. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Be sitting in heavenly places. Good morning, Cross Point. May our King be lifted up in our hearts. Please, I would really like we put our hand together for Minister Thompson. Please. I mean... This man is a humble man, but anointed, rich in revelation. I, I love you. This, this was so powerful. I felt like God hitting me as I was sitting down uh, in my chair as he spoke. You know, come and dance like a child before the Lord. You know, just be who you are. That's who you are. Hallelujah. And we love it that way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yes. Today, if you see me talking like Creflo Dollar, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going, doc, doc, I'm getting in the teaching mode today because I, I want we take notes and I want it to pass from here to here. Amen? Tell your neighbor to not, today, today you will be challenged, will be challenged. Mm, in a good way. Today, you will love more Jesus. Hallelujah. As you know, the theme of the year is right there before you, fruitfulness. That's our theme. And I, I think Pastor JB did an amazing job last Sunday. I think we can clap hands for it. That, that's powerful. Just amazing teacher. Phenomenal. This church is blessed. Cross point is blessed. Amen. Too many dangerous people sitting in this church. Too many dangerous. I'm talking about dangerous for the devil. You know what I'm saying? Too many dangerous. I love it. Too many powerful. That's what I mean. Amazing people. You are amazing people. Amen. Jesus Christ is pleased. I entitled my message, Fruit That Remain. Fruitfulness was given to me by the Lord. I was having a prayer and fasting on my own for five days in Strathmore. It was a serious fast because I needed to hear from God. Sometimes you have to hear from God so that you know where to put your next step and what to do next So I was there in Strathmore, seeking God, and God spoke to me about fruitfulness. And he spoke to me about first fruits. And he spoke to me about roots. He spoke to me about dedication. He spoke to me about returning to your first love. 
He spoke to me about Christianity without compromise. The place of intimacy is the place of power. The devil does not respond to philosophy or worldly wisdom. There's one language the devil understands is the language of power. And power is not found just because you're a good man or a good woman. Power is found in the place of intimacy with the Lord. The Lord spoke to me. He said, there's a lot of things that is stressing my church and my people. Not because they don't love me. But because they are walk away from the first place. They speak more in the past. Oh, years ago, oh my God. We used to pray. We used to fast. We used to have dreams. We used to have vision. We used to give. We used to win souls. We used to see God. Oh my, years ago, my God. God said, though Christianity is a past tense, our testimonies have to be forwarding, yeah. not backwarding. Amen. I come to challenge us. In this 21 days praying and fasting, don't take it lightly. God is calling his people to a place of intimacy. Amen. Into me, see. This is serious. And he said, most of my people stress. And let a thing make them angry, throw tantrum, give up and run away. Not because they don't love me, but because they are walk away from the place of intimacy. God can speak to you in the noise. If he does, you won't hear it. Somebody who's in his right mind don't keep talking to you when it's so noisy. After a while, you finish to scream to a certain level. The noise is louder than your scream. You have to stop waiting for the noise to cool down or step outside from where the noise is. Even Jesus Christ has to walk away from the noise at time to be with the Father. Only then he can come back to the valley of humanity and said, I do what I see my father do. If you need God directive, you have to be ready to separate yourself. And that's why we do pray and fasting. It's a time of separation. It's a time to dethrone King Stomach. It's a time to realign, recalibration. Tune in, in God. And that's why we call this fast. We don't want to wait in December and do catch up. If you want to win in December, it begins now. If you want an amazing year, it begins now. Don't wait till mid-June. You have to be willing and daring to do things you've never done before. Somebody say, you know, but I'm not too comfortable fasting. Do a little bit more than where you, have, you were before. If, if, you, if, if you were comfortable with missing two meals, now drop one meal. All right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do a little bit more. Sacrifice is powerful. Amen. Pastor JB picked me up at the airport and we were just spoke, speaking. They grew up with me here in this city. We were reminding one another the way we used to be crazy. I mean, giving. Nobody needed to ask. We used to do some offerings. This was, I can't even tell it to you. I can't even and we didn't know what we were going to eat. And we go and we sing song. We are joyful and happy even though you've given everything. Today people have everything but they are not joyful, not happy. Yes. Did you see? Yes. I, mean, we, I mean, we used to dare. Those moments were powerful. You didn't need anybody to stir you up. You just feel like, like Minister Thompson said, I made a covenant with God. 
I will not come. This is what's wrong, my friend. This is challenging. This challenged me sitting in my chair. Every service, I have to give something to the Lord, no matter what it is. This is a covenant. This is strong. This is not the resolution I'm going to lose weight. This is not those resolution I'm going to do this for myself. This is true yearly resolution. I will not miss the service. I will not come to any service from front line to Wednesday to Sunday without bringing something. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. This is not given by flesh. Oh. This is given by spirit. So don't try to do this in your own strength. You will fail. And I pray as he shared, somebody just catch something. Because sometimes God will speak to somebody and when they share, the same word he spoke to him become real to you. And you catch that word. Even though it's not to you directly it was spoken, it becomes directly to you. Billy Graham is going to be with the Lord. But I listened to a message of 1952 and he's still speaking to me even though he's not there. The word of God never dies. It is eternal. It is established. It will not pass away. It doesn't lose substance. It doesn't wear out. I want to challenge you, church. Let's go to those places of violent faith. Oh. Uncommon move for God. Uncommon daring for God. No common. I was telling Pastor JB, we are in a generation today where we pray so we can protect what we have. In our days, we give. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. We cannot give God. John 15, 16, please. You did not choose me, but I chose you. We can stop right now here and just have a conversation with God. Did you hear what, just, what is written there? God is speaking. Jesus is speaking to us. He said, you didn't choose me. This is very, very interesting. I chose you. We didn't choose God. If you're here, it's because he chose you. I tell you the truth. Among 7 billion people on this planet, you're among those that Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I choose you. If you understand the depths of this word, you will never fear in your life. I chose you. Let me go further, a little bit further. That word chose in the Greek means, I look at many people and among them, I, you, I want you. I didn't choose you because you are all that was left. <laughs> I had choice, but I chose you. I could have not choose you. I had option. But yet, out of all the options that I had, Kingsley, I want you. Chris, I want you. In our word, there is many people and it pinpoints you out of the crowd. Come on. Do you see how precious you are? He chose you. And he has option not to choose you. And he could have chosen somebody else than you. But yet, he decided out of all the options that were available to him, he did choose you. If it was me, I would not have chosen you. Because I would have been looking at certain other characteristics before I choose. But God chose you. In his sovereignty, it pleased him to call you. Then he said, I never choose you for choosing sake. Now he's telling us why he chose us. So I didn't choose you just to say, hey, I just want to choose somebody. Guess what? Okay, Bishop Michelle, I choose you. No. Every time God chooses you, it's always have an attachment to purpose, as we just heard from minister. 
So God chose you for a reason. And among all the reasons he chose you, here is the real and the true reason. If God chose you to be a pastor, beyond being the pastor, he chose you that you may bring fruit in your pastorship. If he chose you to be a businesswoman or man, he didn't choose you just to say, I want a businessman or woman. No. He didn't choose you just to have a title as a business owner or business person. He chose you to be his business person so that you can bear fruit in businessship. If he called you to be a mother, not just for the sake of being a mother, but motherhood bearing fruit, husbandhood bearing fruit, wifehood bearing fruit. In other words, if God chose you, and he did, and you do not bear fruit, he chose you in vain. We can afford to live our lives without showing fruit. I want this to sink in. God didn't choose you in vain, of course. But he chose you that you may bear fruit. Go back to my verse. And fruit that will remain. You know what it means, remain? That will last. Fruit that will last. Not just fruit that will fade away after a few hours. Fruit that will remain. And then he put a coma. Do you see the coma? That means the sentence is not over now. It's continuing. And what did he say? Read it with me. So that... Answer is directly connected to fruit bearing. Yeah. That you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give you. Why? Because the reason for which I call you, you didn't make my calling in vain, you are bear fruit, and because the fruit remain. I will grant you your prayers. Amen. We need to bear fruit that remain. This year is the year of fruitfulness. You cannot go reap fruit if you didn't sow seed. Pastor JB will have a time to expand on a revelation God gave him on that subject. It's very powerful. A few days ago, I received an audio of one of our beautiful daughter from the Asher team. I call her Grace. The, the Asher people, you guys are carrying anointing, man. And when I listened to this audio, I said, Jesus, you are something. It's powerful. Where people coming and grabbing envelopes because they want to give to the Lord. I tell you, you inspire me because on the 27th, I will be distributing envelopes now. Someone, one to three. How blessed is the man, you can put a woman there too, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight, hallelujah, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates Day and night. Verse 3 now. It will be like a tree, firmly planted. Somebody say firmly. firmly. By the streams of water, 
which yield its fruit in its season. That means there are certain fruit or harvest you cannot harvest else in, in a different time. It has to be in the winter because these three produce only winter fruit. All right? So in its season, you don't go rip apples every season. There's a season to go rip a apple. You get that? Now, this is so beautiful. You got to watch this. It bears fruit in each season. And then the leaves never wither. The King James Version said, leaves are green. That means you're healthy. Spiritually healthy. Physically healthy. Emotionally healthy. Leaves are green. And in whatever he does, mm, he what? Whatever he does. All you need to do in such season is just to do something. Whatever you do, you shall prosper. Amen. And I believe, brothers and sisters, 2019, we will prosper. Amen. And whatever we do, we will prosper. Why? Because we'll walk away from the scoffers. That, you understand? will not sit in the pathway of the sinners and those who scorn the truth of God because we will delight in his words. We will be planted firmly by the streams of waters, feeding from our Lord continually. God said, I don't want to be part-time. I want to be your full time. Continually. You know, I like when we talk about trees. I don't know how many messages I preach on trees. But in the Bible, trees mostly, more than 200 times you will hear the word trees in the Bible. Most of those times speak about human beings. You remember the blind man that Jesus prayed for? He lay his hand on him and he... he his eyes open, and Jesus said, what do you see? He said, I see men walking like, I see trees walking like man, or man walking like trees. And Jesus touched him again twice. It's been a big debate in kingdom of God. How can Jesus touch somebody twice for him to be healed? Jesus doesn't touch twice. He touched you once, you're healed. Why does he have to touch this man twice? Let me give you the answer. It's very simple. Jesus touched him twice for two different manifestations. The first manifestation was not a physical eyes open, was a spiritual eyes open. So when Jesus touched him the first time, he has a spiritual vision. He began to see in the spirit, and in the spirit he didn't see man, he see trees. Then Jesus touched him the second time and catapulted him in the sight of the natural. So Jesus didn't touch him twice so he can be healed. Jesus touched him once, his spiritual eyes are open. He saw men, but he saw trees. And he touched him the second time, his physical eyes are open, and he began to see men as human beings. Amen. This year, there is a tree we have to climb. Hallelujah. And that tree, let me call it the sycamore tree. It is the tree of Zacchaeus. Everybody remember Zacchaeus, the little boy, the little man? Tax collector who ripped up everybody. The Bible says he climbed on a tree. That tree is the sycamore tree. In Israel, it's called the tree of the poor man. When you see a rich man climbing on the tree of a poor man, salvation is coming to his home. It's no longer you inviting Jesus. It's Jesus self-inviting himself to your house. I pray we'll all climb the tree of humility. We will all climb the tree of the poor man. It is the place of humility and transparency and just the way you are. Then salvation will visit you. Deliverance will visit you. Healing will visit you. Prosperity will visit you. Promotion will visit you. But we have to climb first the tree 
of the poor man. That is the tree of the humble man. That is the tree of the sycamore. Whenever you walk away from the presence of God, arrogance enter. I'm telling you. Every human being, whenever your intimacy level with Jehovah begins to go down, your flesh correspondingly is rising up. Your carnality, your humanity, your pride, your arrogance, your weaknesses and your wickednesses begin to rise. When your intimacy with God go down, you go up. That's why we cannot afford to sit in the pathway of the wicked and the sinners and those who mock God. We have to shun evil. If there was a time in the history of your life from when you were born until you will die that will be the highlight of passion for Jesus, let it be 2019. That amen, you didn't catch it. I'm telling you, if you're going to die in 3000, we're in 2019. If you will be dying in 2055 and you were born in 2050, from, 2000, uh, from 1950 to 2055, when they look at the span of your life and like an amplitude and gain, like a sinus moving like that, let 2019 be the, 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 the year where you were at the high peak in worship, high peak in fasting, high peak in prayer, high peak in devotion. High peak. Establish 2019 like no other year. If you're going to dare in your life, let it be this year. You lose all or you gain all. Hmm. We need to trust God like we never. Let leave the sorrows of yesterday. Even as they are still with us, it's okay. We will cry once in a while and have those memories of pain and disappointment and setbacks. We are human beings. But whenever you finish to cry, whenever you finish to be discouraged a little bit, rise up and realize I have to build my peak. I have to build my peak. I have to build my highest moment in my life. Jeremiah 17, 7, 8. I'm going for Jesus Christ with everything I have. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. <laughs> and whose trust is the Lord. Did you get that? No, go back. Stay there, stay there. This is too beautiful for me. I, I want everybody to read this with your own voice. One, two, three, read it. No, no, did you get this? Yes. Who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is in the Lord? I will cut that down for you very nicely. We trust in God because of what he can give us. Our trust is in him because of who he is. Even when he does nothing. Okay, I, I want you to see the two dimensions here of intimacy. Trust in God for the healing, for my breakthrough, for my elevation. Trusting God for my miracle. God applauds that. Trust me because I will do it for you. But there is a, he escalated right away to the next level. He said now, there is another category where you are not just trusting me to do something for you. You put your trust in me. In other words, in my nature, who I am. Not what I can do. Do you know there was a time God didn't do anything? Yet he was still God. What do you think God was doing when there was no universe to create and no angels 
to create and no human being to take care of. When it was just Father, Son, Holy Ghost, no being. Because everything that exists was created by his word. That's what the word says. Am I right? Now, now, what was he doing? So, the doing God, trust in him. But who he is when he didn't do anything, put your trust inside. God, even when you don't do anything, I choose to trust your nature. You are still faithful, even you didn't do anything. That's the difference between the people when things get hot and they run away from Jesus. I'm speaking to you about bearing fruit that remains. You can't bear fruit that remains if you're not rooted in him. As your root, as your fruit. As your root, as your fruit. Blesses the man who trusts in the Lord. And who trusts in the Lord. Next, verse 8. For he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream and will not fear when the heat comes. The heat will come. Do you see when? It didn't say if the heat comes. The heat will come, but you will not fear. The heat will come, but you will not fear. It's not if the heat will come. The heat will come, but you will not fear. But his leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year. No anxiety for you in the year of drought. I love this verse because it's for me personally. I'm just being kind to share with you. This one, when I read it, I almost dress it up like a garment. I am dressed right now in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. You know those firemen, they have a clothes when they get in the fire, that doesn't burn them? This is what God is saying. God said, if you trust in me, I will dress you up for a garment that fire cannot burn you. <laughs> and when the famine comes, you will not be anxious. In the year of drought, no anxiety for you. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Put the last portion there. In the year of drought, nor cease to yield fruit. Tell your neighbor, dryness or no dryness, I am bearing fruit. Jesus said to the fig tree, you. It's, it's interesting. The Bible is so beautiful. He cursed the fig tree, but the, the Bible says it was not the season for the fig tree to bear fruit. Ah, Lord. <laughs> it was not the season. It's, you know, it's not the time for apples to bring forth apples. But Jesus cursed it. Jesus speaking to you and I. There is a people who will be like trees. We will not operate only in our season. I tell somebody last time, stop saying this is my season. Because every season is my season now. <laughs> hey, my God. I take your season, but every season is my season. I will not cease to bear fruit. In season and out of season, every season is my season. That sounds like a rapper. Eh? I will not cease to bear fruit. I will bear fruit in season and out of season. For every season is my season. Every season is my season. The same way salvation has no season. Salvation is now. My blessing also is now. My fruitfulness is now. My favor is now. My healing is now. My elevation is now. Season, out of season, it's my season. Thank you, Jesus. You bear fruit. 
not cease to yield the fruit. Ay, 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 ay. Thank you, Jesus. I want this to penetrate your heart. Let it sink in. If Peter did not dare to jump out of the boat with two feet, <laughs> there is a level of faith that you and I will not be able to believe for. I will speak what I'm saying. Somebody has to dare to believe God without analytical mind, just based on the word come, without any development, philosophy, explanation, proof, this and that. Just come. And he's not calling him to come on a, a familiar territory. Have you ever seen somebody walk on water? In the Bible, we haven't seen that. At least in the scriptures, I don't see anybody walking on water. I saw Moses walking when the water divided. I saw the children of Israel crossing the Jordan when it was divided by somebody walking on the water. I saw Elijah smacking with his mantle to divide the Jordan. I saw Elisha do the same thing, but I haven't seen somebody just walking on water like that. There is still a miracle that is in store in the heavenlies that you have not seen in your generation that God want to release through your life so it can become a reference for the other generation to believe. Hallelujah, somebody. In other words, God want to do something through you that will become a monument, a reference for the other generation. But for that to happen, you have to dare to do what nobody else has done in the other generation. You have to dare to sing a new song. You have to dare to step on uncommon ground. You have to dare to do things you've never done before. I was speaking to somebody this morning. If you walk ordinary, you will reap ordinary. If you give ordinary, you will reap ordinary. If you pray ordinary, you will reap ordinary. Your devotion will determine today where you are. Are you with God or in God? Are you trusting him or your trust is in him? Are you trusting him or your trust is in him? That is the question. We must all answer by fruits, not by talking. Yes, by our action, by doing, by acting. Amen. Listen to me. Nobody has enough money to give a first fruit and feel like I'm still okay. We're all in the same box. But if you have that too much money to do it, it removes something. You need to give more. I want us to feel it. So when I sit down with my children and I don't have the money to go buy milk, I can pray in tongue, romba, daga, dongo, loba, gazi, knowing I have done something from my God. You heard what my wife said here. 2019 is not just waiting for God to do something for you. We are mature daughters and sons. It is time for us to say, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Am I speaking to somebody? It's no longer God do this for me and do this for me and you'll do this. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> no, Lord, what do you want to do for you? That's what draw the line, brothers and sisters. Nobody is so comfortable that it's easy to give a first fruit. This is a challenge for all of us. Calculating and praying. <laughs> Mathematics doesn't add up, but yet you pray in tongue, Roman, I don't care. Generation. It's you and I. Let's do something uncommon. Then when the unbeliever look at you, they say, these people are brainwashed, completely crazy, irresponsible, crazy, irresponsible, brainwashed, tortured. It's okay. I've done it because I just don't put my trust. My trust is in him. I just don't trust him. My trust is in him. 
That's what we stand for. Hallelujah. Bring the best gift you have to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We all have seen moments of discouragement. We've all seen moments of tragedy. And much has happened to many of our beautiful families in this house this year, this past year. Tragedy, lost one, calamities. Things that you didn't pray for that happened to you and knocked you out. We all did. Many people, in a way or another, at different degrees. But you know what? Why are you still here jumping hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, oh. It's because you are rooted in him. If you are not rooted, you will have cursed him. If you are not rooted, you will have dropped your hand. You are root. Many people will have run away from God and cursed God. Oh, Lord, I pray, and this didn't happen. I did exactly everything you asked in your word to do, and then this didn't work out. You know what? I'm done. I gave my time. I gave my first fruit. I pray. I fast. I prayed and believed for the healing, and this. You can list it all. And after when you finish to list it all, you need to decide, are you going to trust him? Are you going to put your trust in him? Or are you going to debate him and create unbelief in your heart? You know, God works in a very mysterious way. I tell you the truth. Sometimes things have to be worse before they get better. <laughs> huh? Some of you sitting here, you think, ah, God, you forgive me. Because this thing dead. This thing didn't work out. This thing has been shut down. This thing, you know, it took everything from me. My sickness, it did not get healed. And listen to me. Hear me. Hear me, right? When you put your trust in God, right? Here's what happened. You trust in his nature. And you know, Lord, you will still do it. What do you mean you will still do it? You will still do it. Because see, in your mind, because this didn't work and this didn't work, it's over. But God's word remains. Somebody just gave a testimony, somebody gave him $10,000. Probably you have worked hard and prayed for a business to bring you 10000 And it didn't work out. Because you see in your mind, my breakthrough needs to come from this. My $10,000 needs to come from this. This is where it's going to come from. I have, I have sown here. This is it. This is it. And God said, the business didn't work to give you 10000 but you meet somebody in the side of the corner, he give you 10,000. His word remain. Can I give you a secret? I was just speaking with Pastor JB. I really believe the blessing I enjoy and you enjoy sitting here, sometimes they are the fruit of 10, 15 years. I tell you, you see, in our mind, I saw a rip. So if I didn't see it, it's over. Remember in season, out of season, it's me doesn't end. When you think the harvest time is over, for God is not over because we are continuing. And I believe there was a moment where we kneeled down and gave everything we had and have to fast, not because you feel fasting because you didn't have anything to eat. And yet you had a smile, singing those small little Congolese music songs and those small Nigerian, you understand? And then you're on fire, but you have no money. But on fire, you don't know how you're going to pay the bill, but on fire. And then nothing really happened in that time. But 10 years later, somebody pay off your mortgage. 13 years later, somebody give you 10000 20 years later, you get married with beautiful children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Do you know how much Zechariah prayed for a child? The, the priest Zechariah. 
Listen. <laughs> Zechariah, when he turned 60, he stopped praying. Because he felt like, you know what, leave it alone. Because sometimes we pray when we still know we have the physical capacity to perform it. Talk to me now. Am I speaking to somebody? So when Zakarab was 30 years old, oh, hallelujah. Thank you for the fruit of the womb. Ha. Yeah, because he knows he's still functional. When the guy start hitting 55, 60, 65, he begin to leave it alone. Let's just serve the Lord. That's what counts. Let's serve the Lord. That's what counts. Ha! Hey! When he's too old and he feel like there's no more mean, he forget about it, the angel show up and say, hey, Zaki, how are you? <laughs> he say, yeah, I'm doing well. I say, you will have a child. Zaki did not know that the prayer he prayed 40 years ago, 50 years ago, now I've been released. When God want to answer your prayers, he doesn't care in which season you are. Even if you are too old to have a child, if he gave you the promise, it will still come to pass. I'm trying to say, you may think the season for you to do business again is over. Let me tell you, this is now you need to believe. This is now you need to believe. You may find the time for you to preach the gospel and serve the Lord and plant churches and have music and have CDs. And you think it's over? Because you pray and 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 pray. Nothing happened the following year. Pray, pray, pray. Nothing happened the second year. Pray, pray, pray. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now you don't pray anymore. But your prayer don't die. Because the prayer that are based on the word and the promise of God don't die. Because if they die, the word of God is no longer established. My prayer is still alive. There are some prayer I prayed 18 years ago that will catch me up this year. Are you hearing me? There are some prayer you prayed 12 years ago that will catch you up in 2019. And then you will wonder, hey, where this blessing come from? I didn't pray for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You prayed for it. It is just a long time ago you forgot. But this time, the Holy Ghost will remind you. You remember last time when you wanted to give up? Laying down on the floor, crying there 15 years ago? Now the time has come. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I say, Lord, some prayer that I pray, when I eat, then I just get born again. 1993. Some of these childish kind of prayer, I want to be somebody, I want to be a great man, I want to be a preacher, I want to be a wealthy man, so I can bless everyone. This prayer are coming to pass now. I say, Lord, collect all my prayers. Collect them. Tell your neighbor, it's time to collect prayers. <laughs> Heaven is collecting prayers so you can fulfill them in 2019. This is our year of fruitfulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mandologodabaya. Even in the heat, I shall not fear. Project me Psalm 126. Everybody love this verse. I will tell you what it means. Those who sow in tears. Does mean there are some offering that make you cry? <laughs> Did you get what I just said? It's not, there's some offering that make you smile. And there are some offering you give, you don't even know you give. Okay. You know, you come and put your offering in the basket. You're used to it. It's like it's automatic. It's a routine, all right? It is the day-to-day -day thing, monthly-to-monthly -monthly thing. You don't feel it because you have already get used to it. You have already calculated all your expenses and it's inclusive. So you survive, you live. You get me? Those ones you come and give and it's normal. I give my tithe, you know. Every month, I give my tithe. Two weeks, a year, bang, tithe. We are used to it, bang, bang, bang. That one, no feeling, give it. But there are some offering. You are sowing and you are crying. I'm going to tell you why they were crying. <laughs> I'm loving this. I, I, I will tell you why they are crying. Don't jump quickly, then you will reap joyful shouting. There's no joyful shouting for you if your offering doesn't make you cry. 
Leave the joyful shouting for those who have cried so they can be comforted. <laughs> God is comforting them. Joyful shouting. Joyful shouting. Israel is surrounded by the enemy. Called the Philistines. Big time. All right? In captivity. This guy has his corn. You see the corn? Let's say he has the corn in this bucket. In this bottle. That's all he has. Now, he doesn't know when the captivity will be broken. We are under siege. It's been a few years now. We don't know when they will go to Arusha to sign the peace treaty. Right? Now, in my barn, I have few seeds. And God told them, Sow it. Now these guys goes, ah, if I keep it, we can at least survive for, for more months. Because there's the siege. I have to gather to secure the livelihood and the survival of my children and my family. You're catching me? Now, when God say now, so, the battle begins with him. Should I so? What if the captivity is not broken? What if the enemy gather my little harvest? Should I keep? At least I can eat. Maybe in two weeks, one month, the captivity will be broken, will be free. At least I will have survived. Especially that I'm hearing there are some neighbors who are dying of famine. So this seed that was in the hand of these people was good to eat to survive. <laughs> and God says so. So now they are sowing, crying. How am I going to feed my children? What if this captivity is lengthened? How are we going to come out? I, I want to eat it, but I want to give it. I want to eat it, I want to give That's what is happening. That's exactly the context. It was in a place where they have a choice to either sow or to keep to survive. And he said, those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. The same choice is made for every believer every day. Do you sow in the flesh to reap a momentary pleasure? Or you sow in the spirit to bring pleasure to God? This life is about sowing and reaping. The world likes to say what goes around comes around. That's what they mean. You will reap what you sow. He didn't say what you give. The first fruit is a seed. We are sowing our first harvest. Sow an offering. You pay a tithe. A tithe is a bill. Did you catch me? He said, and I will open the windows. I was listening to a gentleman who came to minister at Nouvelle Espoir. He's part of the church, very brilliant gentleman. And he said something very deep, and I went and I verified. He said, when God said, uh, in French is, je vais ouvrir les écluses du ciel. I will open the windows. It's not really windows, right? It's like a dam. That's what it is. That means there are blockages preventing blessing to flow to us. So when God says, I will open the windows, means I will remove the blockages. Amen. So that the blessing will flow. So we do not pray for blessing. We pray for flowing of blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. 
He said, you will not have anxiety. How many people know this is heat? When you have to give what you need to eat. It's heat. How many people know there is anxiety? As the, it said, but it said, you will not have anxiety. Read Genesis 26, 12, 14. This one has become my second garment beside Jeremiah 17. That's my second garment. It says this. Now Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Not the next year. The same year, a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. And the man became what? Rich. He blessed him. He became what? Rich. And continued to grow what? Some of you are rich. But in fruitfulness, you will grow to be richer. Some of you are in survival mode. But in fruitfulness, you will move from surviving to giving. You catching me? Until he became very wealthy. I talked to you about the dimensions of wealth. He became very wealthy. Verse 14. Watch this now. For he had what? Possessions of flocks, herds, great households, and that the Philistine what? That's the top. When you get so loaded, blessed, family is blessed, marriage is blessed, finances are blessed, business is blessed. As the Bible says, God bless Abraham in all things. In every area he was top. He produced fruit. Even your enemy who used to mock you, now they begin to envy you. They say, oh, there's a problem my language said, even if you're again the rabbit, you have to recognize it can run. <laughs> you get in a place, you're so blessed, even the people against you, they will keep hating you, but they will envy you. Yeah. They will say, I don't like his head, but mm, if I can be like, right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Who am I talking to? This is our year of fruitfulness. Yeah. We will sow. Isaac sow. it was in famine. Yeah. I want you to show you how, whenever God asks you to sow, is never in abundant time. It's in scarcity. Here is the people that are surrounded by the enemy. He said, go sow. They are sowing in tears. Here is this man called Isaac in the famine where he wanted to run to go survive in Egypt. God says, stay in Gerar. That's where you stay. And I want you to sow. So what? When all the Philistine people were keeping the seed, thinking they are smart, because they were so smart in the head. No brainer, no rain. Why are you going to throw your seed in a place there is no rain? Can you not see all the ground is hard? Mm -hmm. Those seed will die, man. Isaac said, no competition. I will go out to sow when nobody goes out to sow. Because I know there is a God who will make me bear fruit in all seasons. I don't care how hard the ground is. If God told me to sow, I will sow in the dry ground and it will produce hundredfold the same year. You know what is amazing that these Philippines, eh, Philippines, <laughs> Philistines, these Philistines envy, these Philistines envied Abraham. <laughs> Filipinos, I love you, you know that. They want that. They mock him because they saw him sowing in the dry ground. This guy is crazy. He just lost his head, man. How can he then dare to do something like that? All right? And then they saw him now reaping. They feel like, what happened? They fear him not because he become too wealthy. They fear him because he become wealthy when you're not supposed to be. When it was not the season. <laughs> That's where they fear him. They say, whoa. This guy is dangerous. I understand when it's a season of prosperity, you prosper. But now, this is the season where nobody is supposed to prosper. And we see you planting some seed. We thought you were out of your head, your mind. And now we see you reaping. This guy is scary. He's too dangerous. That should be your story 2019. If you obey the word of the Lord... God will honor his own word above anything. I'm standing on the same word in Jesus' name.
let me close this thing quickly and let you go home. No, no, we need to dance the song first. We will not tear today, we will dance today. Hallelujah. You have two weeks still before you become tearing. So let's take advantage. <laughs> I know we'll do it happy, fortunate to be handed. Uh, Colossians 2.7. In this prayer and fasting, I want we become greater lovers of Jesus. I mean fall in love with him. Somebody say fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love again with Jesus. Yeah. Having been firmly rooted, rooted, root, fruit, root, fruit. We have to be rooted in him, rooted, and now being built up in him and established in your faith. Just as you were instructed, somebody say instructed. instructed. You know, instruction come, it's up to you to receive it or not, but you were instructed. You've been instructed since end of December up to here. You've been instructed. Before December. Just as you were instructed and overflowing with gratitude. You need to be thankful that we are sharing such word with you. You need to be grateful. You need to be thankful for that. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, Lord, here's what I believe for this church and for myself. That you will usher us in a place where we trust in your nature. We trust in who you are because that's what will keep us falling away. That's what keeps us even when all situations rise against us. Because we choose to trust him and put our trust in him. You heard me say that before. The world works on a functional paradigm. In other words, we gather together because we have a common project. That's what we do in our businesses. That's what we do even in church. We work in the paradigm of functionality. We have a common goal. We are driven by purpose. You can see that in that book, Purpose Driven, of course. To fulfill a job description. God doesn't work that way. God function, not you, like you and I. But God paradigm, heavenly paradigm, is relational. It's not functional. It's relational. In other words, it's through relationship, functionality comes out. So your ministry is born out of your intimacy with God. All right? At work, you don't care if you have a relationship with a person or not. You have your job description. You are a software engineer. You, you need to do the project management. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care if we are a good friend or not. Let's deliver the merchandise. Do the thing. Let's finish the project. It's functional. We are connected by functionality. But in the paradigm of heaven, God connects to us through relationship. Yeah. And out of relationship, functionality. That's why he's calling his church to draw near in the secret place to seek him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your souls. Many people are praying, Lord, what do you have for me? That's functionality. What is my calling? That's functionality. What do you want me to do? Do, do, do. It's functionality. God said, I would like to tell you but it won't profit you as long as it's not birthed out of intimacy. So if you want to know what God wants you to do, move from functionality, enter relationship. Listen to me. When you're in relationship with a person, you know the nature of the person. Suddenly you begin to trust the person, not what the person does. You begin to know them in such a way you trust their nature. That's why somebody will say, uh, Brother Kennedy says he's going to do this for me and stuff. And then I can say, it, take it to the bank. I know he's faithful. He will do it. How can I say that? I have to say it because I hang around a person and I've come to know you intimately. 
Only then I can bet on your character and your person. Not on your abilities. Because you can have abilities and not deliver. Do you catch me? But because of who you are, the character, I, I, I need to know you to be able to, to put my word on such an individual. N nothing to do with your gifting. So we are in, in a world where we do. We do. I'm an engineer. I'm a preacher. I am this. It's a doing. But God says, relationship. Paradigm of heaven is closeness with Jehovah. It's tightness with Jehovah. Out of that relationship, you begin to know his thoughts without anybody speaking to you. You are in their presence and you can feel them. It's like a husband and a wife who have been together for many years. They begin to look alike. You, she doesn't need to open her, her mouth to speak. You can feel her. You can tell when she doesn't like something. You can feel the atmosphere change. Everybody else, nobody feels it because they don't know her. The one you know, you feel his presence. And you won't know a person if you don't spend time with the person. Are you catching this? The more you spend time with God, the more you begin to know him. I'm not talking about trusting God only. Putting your trust in him. You can do that. You cannot put your trust in a person if you don't know this person. Can you? But it's not because God is able to do everything that automatically you can put your trust in him. The reason we struggle to put our trust in God is because we don't know him. And the reason we don't know him is because we don't seek him. Even though we worship every morning. I'm talking about a personal quest. One-on-one -on -one seeking. Beyond the corporate seeking. Beyond the corporate relationship we're having with him right now. And it's so beautiful. I'm talking about a personal God chasing, seeking, finding, enjoying, knowing through that transformation is secure. But we are so busy. We actually think we seek him. We give God the leftovers of our hours. The leftover of our strength. The leftover of our anointing. Hey, your anointing will betray you. If you do not dwell in intimacy with God. You know why? Because arrogance will come in. Your flesh will rise in it. This is not a matter of guilt. I'm talking about a man and a woman who understand the intensity of this year, 2019, and who decide not to play around, but to secure and make themselves available to properly seek God without cheating. When we, deep, we say pray, I give up on everything, I'm, I want to go for it. When we say give, I sacrifice, I want to go for it. When we say fast, it's not the time for me to have a debate with myself. Should I read and eat the sugar? Should I eat the bread? How many bread should I eat? Probably I'm going to drop some bread. I will eat one piece of bread. This is not a time to debate. Resolute in your heart. What do you have that is precious in you, that is meaningful in you, valuable in you, that you want to put on the table? I went to a house yesterday, and these people invited us were so kind from them. Until they have a beautiful cake right on it, welcome. It's so kind. So kind. I was with one of our pastors, Pastor Blaise, my wife, our, our family. And of course, it's evenings. People are breaking their fast and stuff, and that's totally fine. But me, I was in a different dimension doing something different. And uh, I saw that. 
I had to stand and look at them straight because I calculate if they can handle me. So I eat all the salad that was there. And then I look at her and said, baby girl, you're so special. Thank you for welcoming us. In February, I will invite you to my house and I will feed you properly. But today, this cake, don't let me touch it if you can allow me. This is not the time to play game. And that, oh, you know, Paul said, you're going to be whatever you want for anybody so you can win the more. Jesus is grace, grace, grace. Listen to me. Whenever you begin to justify yourself to go against your first decision, yeah. when I started this fast, I did not put cake in it. Yeah. Do you understand? So if you give me cake right now, I won't eat it. Because cake was not a part of my devotion, commitment, or what I say, God, I will do. Yes. That's good. This year, you are either in or you are out. Yes. You hear me say it before. Yes. One foot in, one foot out, you are out. You are not in the middle. There is no time for compromise. If you want to fast, fast properly. If you decide to eat one meal, eat a good meal. That's good. No condemnation. But if you have decided that you will do this way, this way, stick to it, stick to it, stick to it, stick to it, stick to it. Yeah. No playing around. I want we learn to trust God and to put our trust in God. Friends. And this is it, as far as I'm concerned. I begin to give first fruit to God when I just get born again, and nobody told me to it. One day I was in my room after a few days of salvation, and the Holy Ghost began to tickle me. And I'm laughing like this. And I have a job where I used to go teach some kids physics and mathematics. And, and these people were very rich, so they paid me pretty good. $30 an hour in those days was okay. Yeah. Today is okay too, am I right? Yeah. I tell you, the Holy Ghost is tickling me, all right? And I'm supposed the next day to go get my income. And I have calculated everything already. And it, now, I don't know the Bible, never read the Bible, don't know these church stories. You know that? And then the Holy Spirit whispered to me, you know, you're going to go get your pay tomorrow at this uh, Iranian man. I said, I feel like, yeah, hallelujah. No, I was happy I will give a little bit. Right? And he said, take all and give it to the man who led you to the Lord. It was the pastor where I was born again. It doesn't exist in the vocabulary or in my knowledge. Nobody ever taught me that. I just heard what he said. And I was more embarrassed what this guy going to think about me than giving the money. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I, I tell you, I, I took it. I was so shy because I'm a new Christian. I don't understand the Christian dumb stories. I don't know, oh, am I even going to reach to this big man of God? Right? I was, I was more troubled about why he's going to think about me because I didn't know they do this in church. It was in the place of intimacy. God speaks counsel. And direction. Christian today, we watch Google, we watch YouTube, we watch all the preaching and read all the books in the world. But you know what? We don't like to read the books where they say you get a sacrifice. That's right. We read only when I receive, I am blessed, yeah. I am honored, I am elevated. You understand? It's true what I'm saying. Who, who have bought a book about suffering for Jesus? Is, huh? Or giving until you cry. Have you ever seen a book like that? I should probably write something like that. Because we don't like that. Yet, hear me. And I'm closing. There are certain things I can ask Pastor Carl that I can ask somebody I just met in the road. Don't miss me. I said, there are demands I can put on this man 
without thinking. Why? Not because he's a pastor. It's beyond his position. It's relationship. When you begin to spend time with God, God will trust you to ask you things that he won't ask the common guy there. He knows he can trust you to believe that he can ask you such and such. And he knows, even if it's costly, you will deliver. But he won't ask any other bad person because they don't have that strength of relationship for him to put such a demand. If God allowed me to preach such a message to you, it's because God is trusting you that he believes he can put such a demand on you. There are churches I go, I can preach it. Even some cross point churches, they are not ready. Some of them are not ready yet for this. I went to Ottawa, and that church just started a year. And I was there preparing a message, and God said, this, You will come back and preach this message here. I call them emergency, I say, I'm coming to your church. The church is one year. Yet there are other churches of cross point that are five years, six years. I can't preach it there yet. Because they are not ready for this. Right. So you, you should be happy. Yeah. Do, do you understand? Because since 2005, I have this revelation. But you were not ready to handle this. You will have left to leave the church and think, oh, apostle is after money now. You are right. I'm not after money. I'm after God. Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? I'm just trying to check and see where your trust is. Are you trusting God or is your trust is in God? That's the bottom line. Either way, you are blessed. Either way, we love you. Either way, you are special. Because we all grow from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You cannot eat the steak I eat. It may be too big for your stomach. Or some of you, it will be too small for your stomach. But either way, you know your size. But I have to throw the big steak out and see what you can chew. I, I want to see what you can chew. I even put bones in it for you. Mature sons and daughters, Christian. And we see how much can you chew out of this bony, rich protein, meat, triple A. Tender cereal, filet mignon. <laughs> Take as much you can. Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Do you know the fruit? You see the fruit? You've seen fruits? Mango fruits? Apple fruit. Some of you don't know what a mango fruit is because you never see a mango tree. Some of you don't know what an apple is. You never see an apple tree. All right? But for the people who come from Africa, you know what mango is. From people who are from here, you know what an apple is. Or berries, blackberries. Don't miss this. Stand up on your feet. I give it to you standing up. Worship team, come stand up here before I pray for you. I give you this one. This one, you don't want to miss it. When God gave me this one, I jump. I didn't know what to do with it because it was for me. It was my third garment. How many garments did I have today? Three. This was my third garment I put on. The, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know, you don't bear fruit just to feed people. You see, if you bear fruit, I will eat of your fruit. Right. right? You begin to contribute. You begin to be valuable. Yeah. That's why God wants you to bear fruit. So you can be what? Valuable. Right. So you can contribute. A fruit does not eat its own. That's right. The river does not drink its own water. 
The fruit doesn't eat its own fruit. The apple, the apple doesn't eat itself. The apple tree doesn't eat the apple. And the Lord said, nature is a wise investor. My people have not learned it yet. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus said to the children of Israel, to the disciples, the people of this world, of the kingdom of the world, are wiser than the people in the kingdom of God. Because you are playing tambourine on the marketplace and you want me to dance. Jesus was telling them, marketplace is not to play drums. Marketplace to do business. He said the people of this world, when they are on the marketplace, they don't play. They don't play drums. They do business with everything they have. So God said, the trees are wiser. Because you see, when you cut an apple tree, you're happy. You feel like, wow, thank you so much, apple tree. I was hungry. Now you just give me a beautiful fruit. How many people enjoy that? Now, do you know it's a camouflage for the tree? The tree gives you fruit, knowing when you finish to eat it, it will multiply through you because you will throw the seed somewhere. <laughs> that is the strategy of the tree to expand. So I give you fruit, and through the fruit that you partake, you will multiply me. I eat the fruit, but the mango seed, I carry it with me. Where do I put it? On the soil. What will come out? Another tree. So the tree cannot multiply until it bears fruit. And the reason it bears fruit is to feed those who need it and use them. <laughs> Mandolo bagayaya. Use them to plant for him. So suddenly, more fruit, more seed, more people you feed, more people spread. That's why when you have a business, it's called customer service. If you treat well the customer, he eat of the fruit of honor. Excellent. You know what he's going to do? He will go and eat. And then whenever he arrives somewhere, he said, you know what? This place where they sell the rice, whoa, this is it. What is he doing? He eat of the fruit and he just throw a seed for you. Guess who's going to knock at the door? Somebody that the tree is planted, it cannot move. But the fruit moves. Only if it's beneficial for others. Ah, oh my God, you are catching me. You are catching me. So all you need to do for your business is not your movement. Let your fruit move. Let your fruit move. Your fruit will begin to talk louder about you. And you know what is interesting? You will not need to displace yourself. They will displace themselves to go find you wherever you are. Why? Because your seed will reach further than you. And your seed will talk louder than you can talk. So from today, I want you to know, God wants you to bear fruit. That's why he's speaking to you about trusting him and trusting in him. Thank you, Jesus. Fruit. One day my wife went for a bank. You probably hear that testimony. She went to a bank in Burundi. And she wanted to go to an account to take some money. And her name is not on the account. Imagine. So I wrote a letter and said, please, these little few bucks that are there, I'm going to Rwanda. Here is my passport copy because I had to leave in the morning. Please. I sign, I give full authorization to my wife. Here is her information. Here is her passport. Here, da, 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 da. Here is a witness. And I left it my wife. I left. She went to the bank. <laughs> when she arrived to the bank, 
the ladies, the beautiful ladies at the door say, you know what? It's impossible. Your husband needs to be here. All these photocopies and stuff like that, no, 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 it doesn't work. Some signatures, witness, leave it alone. She said, you know, can I talk to the manager? Say, he will tell you the same answer. Finally, they release her to go talk to the manager. The manager receives her in her office. She's sitting pleading her case. The manager said, even if the president of the republic <laughs> signed this for his wife, uh-uh, doesn't work. My wife now said, republic president, I'm done. Packing her stuff, suddenly as she's packing, the gentleman who was sitting behind the door saw the photocopy of my passport and said, oh, oh, hold it. What's this? Give me. I know this man. He looks at This is the pastor, El Hajj. He said, yeah. He's your husband. He said, yeah. you should have told me that in the beginning. <laughs> what is that? Fruit. Yeah. I don't know this guy. But he was blessed. He heard somebody was blessed in the meeting. And somebody went to the bank and said, there's this guy. Oh, my God. God used him to bless me. He is amazing. And the guy swallowed me. He swallowed my fruit. He swallowed my anointing. He swallowed my heart. Then my wife is walking desperate in the midst of nowhere. Here is the power of fruit. Here is the power of fruit. He ate of the fruit of the gift that I carry. Amen. It profited to open the door to my wife. And he will not have opened the door to the president of the republic. Somebody say fruit. fruit. Your fruit will open doors for you. I said, your fruit will open doors for you. Close your eyes. I feel today to pray grace for you. Just simple grace. Because there are certain things we cannot do it only by grace. And I pray for me and you too. For the abundance of harvest. A grace that will make fear go. Worries go. Obedience. Greater than sacrifice. Father, you asked me to do this. I'm doing it by obedience. Because I trust you and I put my trust in you. Let your grace come upon us right now. Empower our hearts to do the difficult. Empower our mind to believe your words. Let joy rise within us. Let faith rise within each person today. Because we know when we trust you and we put our trust in you, we will not be disappointed. Reveal facets of who you are unto us that we never knew. Take us from the theory zone. Bring us to the lively zone, the real zone, the true zone, the face-to-face -face zone, the tangible zone. Take us from the realms of knowing you mentally into beholding you heart to heart, spirit to spirit, thought to thought. As Moses sought you and found you, we seek you to find you. Jeremiah trusted you and put his trust in you. God, cross point, choose to trust you and put our trust in you. As for us and our families, we stand on the words that cannot fail. We stand on the words that cannot be shaken. We stand on the word that is true. Because you are faithful and true. Each person increase our measure of grace and faith. 
that we will give according to our measure and grain of faith. So we will pray according to our measure of grace and faith. That we fast seeking you according to our measure of grace and faith. Increase so, O oh Lord Jesus. Increase so, O oh Lord Jesus. Increase so, O oh Lord Jesus. Let this year be uncommon in every area. Let this year be rich in encounters. Oh, Jesus. Encounters. Beholding you. Even this morning, awaken a new passion. Awaken a zeal. A stronger manifestation of our quest for you, oh God. The rivers that were blocked, stagnated like a pond. Make it a life again that may begin to live, to flow, to move. Make us addicted to you that we may spend time in your presence. Let this season be a season of an awakening, personal revivals, personal awakening, personal encounters, personal refreshing, personal strengthening, that our eyes will open to behold you. Those who have lost vision, dreams, that they may recover such, oh God. Those who have ceased to dream, that they may dream. Those who have ceased to believe, they may believe a little more. Those who have ceased to pray, that they may pray a little more. Those who have gone lukewarm, that they may be warmed up, ignited, stirred up, oh God, for you, for you, addicted for you, addicted to you, addicted in you. Abiding in you, resting in you, our peace in you, our families in you, our finances in you, our marriages in you, our dreams, projects, businesses in you, O oh God. In the place of peace and rest, a byproduct of relationship. Bring the many to their first love. That we can cry again in your presence. Overwhelmed by your love. Overwhelmed by your compassion. That we will desire to lay down on our stomach. On the carpet of God. Like David the king. Lying down before the king of kings. Regardless of the notoriety that we carry. We humble ourselves before you. We afflict our souls with fasting because we want to be like you. Oh, transform us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. As we empty ourselves, oh God, fill us up to overflow. Bring the joy of salvation back to many that they will laugh again, that they will jubilate again. That they will celebrate again. Those who are mourning, remove the garment of mourning. Dress them with the garment of praise. With a fresh oil on their head to shine the glory and the hope of tomorrow. A colorful future, a great future, an amazing future. Those who are lonely, wrap your hands around them. Let them feel your strength, oh God. Uplift the heads of those who are downtrodden. Remove the shame upon the face of the many as we behold you that will shine with glory, will shine with a new hope, will shine with a laughter, with a smile. Peace. Peace. 
you live with us and let that peace become a reality, oh God. Let we do something we never done, Lord. Empower us by your grace to do something difficult, to do something sacrificial. Not because you demand, but because you tell us to give you something. It is our turn to ask you, Lord, what can I do for you? Lord, what can I move for you? Lord, what can I speak for you? Lord, what can I give for you? Lord! As we heard from your servant, every donkey that you need, that was tied up, the Lord has need of. Release it. Release it. No matter how valuable it is to you. Release it. Lord, we want to come before you like children again. Like children. Like children. Simple hearted. Because you have loved us first. I want you to put your hand like that around yourself. Just squeeze yourself. Feel the warm embrace of your Father that's in heaven. That's how much He loves you. He is not after you to punish you, to wrong you, to exploit you, to judge you, to condemn you. He loves 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 you. And He is in love with you. He loves you and he's in love with you. He believes in you. He's proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. You said in Isaiah, what can a man build for me? You've seen it all. You have it all. You did it all. But here is the man that I seek. The one who trembled at my words. Here is the one who will climb up on my hill, my mountain. The one who have clean heart, clean hands, and a pure heart. This morning, let his blood wash your mind from all dead thought, dead works. Let the blood that sanctify you begin to purge you from all fears and wickedness. He loves you. That you may leave this place fresh, like a born again again. Squeezy clean. Squeak, quick, clean. No guilt. No condemnation, no guilty conscience, a fresh start because of such a great hope. We give him thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate with a clap offering? We will be here in prayer on Tuesday, Wednesday. Friday, Saturday is open. Come and flat out on this carpet. Wet it with your tears. Talk to him. Get close to him. If it's too tough at home to do it alone, just come here. You, you do it here, the atmosphere will be set up for you. Rearrange your schedule. Make it personal with God. I love you. give one worship to the Lord one and then we're going to hug 30 people all right may the Lord bless you then let's stand up on our feet and give a praise to the Lord before we can hug one another thank you Jesus